Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Campus Consortium's grant webinar featuring $132,000 Mobile Grant Award winner, Delaware Technical Community College. In today's presentation, Amanda Lennon will share her journey on how Delaware Technical Community College utilizes this grant and how you can apply for a similar grant. Our presenters include Ms. Amanda Lennon, who is the Information Technology Project Manager for Delaware Technical Community College, and Mr. Vincent Lamba, Vice President, Community Engagement at Campus Consortium. We will take questions at the end of today's presentation that have been typed into the chat box or questions pane in your GoToWebinar control panel. Without further ado, please allow me to present Mr. Lamba and Ms. Lennon. Over to you, Mr. Lamba. Thank you, Roger the introduction and very warm welcome to everyone who's joined us here today for the webinar. We are looking to go ahead and talk about how Delaware Technical Community College utilized their grant and took their mobile app live and how they have been using their app. So apart from that, we will be giving you a brief on the grant program and how you can apply for the grant. All right, so for those of you who don't know about Campus Consortium, uh, we are a nonprofit institution that unites approximately 37,000 institutions globally. We were founded back in 2003 by 14 universities almost 15 years ago, including the uh, University of uh, Montana and Case Western Reserve University. We scaled from then to 2,000 member institutions and now to 37,000 institutions worldwide. Our mission is to reduce cost of education throughout the world by offering these technology grants. Here are some of the grant award winners uh, from last year, 2017. We received roughly uh, 500 applications. We shortlisted 48 institutions and our grant award winners were Everett University. Um, they won the grant for cloud hosting and O365 migration. Um, Benedictine University, they won the grant for after hours health care services. And, uh, you know, Kentucky Wesleyan College and Delaware State University, of course, is presenting today. Um, some of the grand award winners, uh, you know, that you'll see on your slide now are the most recent ones. And uh, uh, some of them are Oregon State University won the uh, single sign-on and identity uh, grant. And Roanoke uh, Chowin won the grant for single sign-on and identity as well. Okay, so... What are we offering today? The, of course, the Mobile Campus Grant, uh, and this grant covers a total of $252,465 over a period of five years in licensing and implementation. The qualifi qualification criteria is fairly straightforward. Send your application through to us, and we will get that reviewed by our the grant committee. Uh, the, you know, the only thing we're looking for is that the applicants should demonstrate a commitment uh, to implement you know, to implement the solution in their, uh, his or her institution. Okay, and uh, I will now take a moment to talk about Amanda. Uh, Amanda has been uh, leading the whole project of implementation uh, and, you know, from, of course, DDCC. Uh, she spearheaded the entire project herself. Uh, Amanda Lennon is, you know, the Information Technology Project Manager for, uh, you know, DTCC, a college with more than 15,000 students enrolled annually and 95% employment rate for its graduates. Amanda implements college-wide technology projects that ultimately help foster student success. She has been uh, the driving force behind the mobile application movement at the college and continues to provide leadership in mobile technology development. Okay. Uh, Amanda, I want to do a quick audio test to make sure you can hear me. Hi, can you hear me? Great. Yes, absolutely. Crystal. Okay, at this point, Amanda, I'm going to pass the platform over to you and share the presenter control. Over to you, Amanda. Okay. Okay, can everybody see my screen? You can. Okay. So, good afternoon. This is the first webinar I've ever given, and I have to say it's a little daunting since it's being recorded for, and it's going to be out there forever. Um, I wanted to talk to you coming from Delaware Technical Community Colleges experience with Campus Consortium and the grant that we received for the mobile application. And um, just to give you a little bit of a background, um, we were founded in 1966 
And up until last year, we actually were just a um, two-year college. Everything was certifications and uh, associate degrees. And as of last year, we now are also a four-year college. The only four-year degree program we currently have is a Bachelor of Science in Nursing, but it was uh, very exciting for us to, to move forward with that. We have about um, 15,000 credit students, and if you include non-credit, we, uh, we have about 21,000. We have four locations in, in Delaware, and our Wilmington and Stanton campuses, we kind of smush those together and call them one of our campuses, usually. Uh, we, have, we currently are using uh, a Lucian banner, and that's for our student information system. And then uh, we also use degree works along with, with Banner. And just to give you an idea, we've actually, um, we're kind of half in Banner 8 and half in Banner 9. And I'll probably give you a little bit more information in regards to the application uh, in a few slides. We currently have Blackboard and uh, Desire to Learn. We have Blackboard and D2L. We are transitioning from Blackboard. So when we uh, when we got the mobile application, we had Blackboard only, but we knew we were moving. Um, email, we have we're moving from that also to Exchange. So we've got a lot of projects moving, and um, the mobile app provider is is Unified uh, currently, or currently Unified used to be Cryptos. So if I say Cryptos, I apologize. I said that for years, and we I tried to to list just a few things that we're pretty proud of. And one of them is that we are a very military friendly school. And I uh, just wanna make sure I mention that. So here's just a quick look at uh, some of our campuses and um, some of our spaces that we're pretty proud of. So those of us at Delaware Tech knew that we needed to be able to provide students with a mobile app. I mean, it's, it's a given since the majority of our students, and I'm assuming most colleges and universities, um, have and rely on their mobile devices for most everything anymore. We knew uh, it needed to be able to give students the ability to perform most of the functions they can do on campus. We wanted them to be able to do perform those same functions from their mobile devices. Um, we, we knew we needed to find an app that could supply this for us for for the students' convenience, but also we realized that it would help us reduce a lot of the, the issues that we have with long lines for registration and a lot of other business services, particularly on specific days. Um, I'm sure everyone's familiar with that. And so we we needed we needed a mobile application. We needed it to be, you know, Delaware Tech branded. And we went, wanted to make sure that it worked on iOS and Android devices. Um, you know, I, iPads are actually used a lot in, in our classrooms. And so that was a, the iOS was a, definitely a, a big thing, a big um, consideration that we had. We wanted to make sure that as we were developing an app that we would be able to uh, maintain that the consistent branding and colors throughout that it wasn't just going to be a logo and then not look anything like uh, the rest of our branding. We wanted a seamless integration with uh, a Lucian banner and um, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of information um, on versions. When we were looking at these mobile application vendors, we first looked to a Lucian since uh, they are providing our student information system. And at the time we asked, they had a mobile app that was gonna be, they were, it was gonna be over $100,000 for implementation and over $40,000 per, per year after that. And, and you know that was really more than we could pay. Uh, so, but as we were speaking with Elucian, we were also starting to speak with Cryptos or Unified. And uh, we were asking questions. And one of the questions that we asked was, um, since we are planning to upgrade to Banner 9 at the time, which was XE, 
they called it XE, um, we asked if that version was supported. And honestly, when we asked that question to Elucian, we had just assumed that they were going to say yes, since it is an Elucian product. And what we got back was actually no, Elucian could not support uh, their own um, updated version um, at that time. And that was very telling, I thought, of, of, of the application. And we came to uh, Unified, asked the same, same question. And actually, we were, I apologize if I go back and forth because we were talking to Campus and Consortium and, and Unified, but um, we asked if, if they could do the same thing if they were able to um, work with Banner 9, and they, we got a really quick answer of yes, and this is how. Uh, so we definitely wanted to move towards Unified uh, if we had the money, um, just based on how easily they were able to work with everything that we mentioned. And um, we also, uh, we're very concerned about cost, which put Elucian's application out of the running at that point. So, uh, so the problems that we had to overcome and uh, were able to over overcome was by working with Campus Consortium's grant program, we were able to um, save the money that we really couldn't put out there on you know, the discovery implementation licensing costs for this mobile app. So for us, you know, we really, you know, once we talked to Camps Consortium, we, we found that we would be able to afford it. And then we spoke with Unified and found they were going to be able to provide us with this definitely scalable solution. You know, it really was a no-brainer for us. And the, the process actually moved pretty quickly, approval-wise, and, and my at the school, which um, you know, which was surprising and, and great, just because it was such a large project, um, you know, that it was approved so quickly. Um, I, I wanted to point out too, you know, besides scalable, we noticed when we were speaking with the technical teams um, how, and, and as we worked on the project, how quickly everything was turned around and we were impressed with the the development team's capability so if we made a phone call and said you know this isn't going to work for us because of x y and z um this is what we need sometimes i um, at the end of the call the person who was on the call would say okay i just made that change for you if you want to check so it was it was very nice working with with these groups so for us, the the changes were were great, and I I knew that it was mentioned that I was this was kind of my start to finish uh, project. I I was able to apply for the grant and follow it through, you know, the entire process, approval, legal, um, development, testing, um, working with marketing to um, to help put that out there for the students, and. Um, it's really been um, crucial for us, I feel like, in the last year, especially with this this app. Um, the students, we've, we have over, over 10,000 downloads for the app so far. And really, the marketing was just put out this past year, uh, even just in the last two semesters. So I know that this number will, will be a lot larger very soon. But really, the changes for us have been, you know, more than what we expected. The students jumped on it. They had good things to say. They were extremely, ha extremely happy that they could do, perform so many of the functions that they had to come and wait in line for. Now they could do it on their phones. So um, I, I think it's been great for students, faculty, and, and staff. It's been really good for not just, like I said, not just the students, but um, we've had really good responses from the faculty as well because the students were able to go in and check their their grades whenever they wanted to check their grades. They could they could check their account information, and and I I'll go in and show you some of the uh, the applets that we decided on. Um, from a project standpoint, there was a, a lot involved in terms of, on my end of 
making sure that that all of the the crucial people were involved. So we had, um, you know, academic affair, different um, dean's offices, and we had IT, and um, we had business office and the registrars, and we we had pretty much everybody at the college, at least an example from those groups um, throughout the process. And I think it allowed us to to help uh, Unified develop exactly what we needed. And um, so let me take you. Oh, and I wanted to mention the push notification as well. That's actually kind of new to us. We That came out after we had already been using the mobile app. And uh, we've, we've been using that for our, uh, a short time. But it's been great, and we we use it for a lot of things, from school closings for for snow um, to making sure that everybody remembers, you know, key registration dates. So let me let me take you out to. So I'm going to sign in to show you how easy it is to use the portal. I'm trying to sign in with my work. Computer password, that's not helpful. Okay, so we have the the Delaware Tech app and then we have the public safety app as well. So it shows me all the applications that I have right now. And I'm going to select the Delaware Tech app. And so over here on the right, we have the emulator, which is nice to be able to see how it's going to look on the different phones. And we, we still do um, testing. We can put in an individual um, user to test if we need to do that for anything. So the, we had to choose between public and non-public applets or we had to separate that out. So the student does have to log in if he or she wants to access anything that is connected to uh, Banner. So all of these are, are public. So I'll just show you what we did. Some of our applets go directly into um, the, the function and some of them we've actually kind of grouped. So our academic Affairs and student affairs decided they wanted to have a couple of groupings. Getting started shows them that they can apply online through this app. They can look at programs of study. They can request information. And um, we've had several, I think, changes of what applications are going to come first. That's definitely a decision that a lot of people don't agree on in the college. Um, I don't know if. Uh, if I should suggest that there's a committee, but that's what we're doing now, actually. We're starting to have a committee for that. Um, so that's not strictly on the web developer or the IT person to make these decisions. So we have getting started. We have the course schedule. Um, my courses is what we call Blackboard. Um, bookstore, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, we have all of those student activities. Um, it's the calendar, and uh, we had different options of how we were going to set up the, the student activities calendar, um, and we ended up linking to a calendar that we have on the web, but I know that, that um, we had the ability to do separate calendars for different activities within the application as well. And so I don't want to go through everything, but um, I know there's a lot of features that we did not choose. We, we don't have um, uh, students that live on campus. We don't have, um, we, we have kind of cafeteria um, locations, but we, they're not really uh, restaurants, so we don't list those. Um, but these are, this is what we chose. And then the, the banner applets, they can register. They can look at their schedule, um, their account info. They can add and drop classes, which has been um, I think one of the most popular uh, applets is uh, register, add drop classes, um, the you know Blackboard link, and grades. I think are some of the most popular uh, applets used. 
And speaking of popularity, so I, I use the analytics a lot. And, you know, we use that when giving updates on how, you know, the application is working out for the students. But it's also nice to get an idea of what applets they're using the most and um, maybe what order we should place the applets on the phone. So this shows you here the the total downloads that, that we've had. And you can see here that we've got about 70% um, Apple students. And that makes sense um, based on what we see actually see in the classrooms. And they they do use the email functionality. And it's interesting, I'll put this out there too, that we actually had um, differing opinions on whether or not email should be added in because, you know, well, everybody can put email on their phones, so why would we have it inside the the mobile app? Well, you know, we decided it was part of Delaware Tech, and a lot of the students may not put their school email account onto their actual phone. So we're really glad that we did because um, that is the most uh, used applet that we have and we've got some student um, comments saying that they appreciate that they can access everything from the app so so getting back to I think that's my final uh, slide there uh, thank you Amanda uh, we will take the control back Okay. okay, and at this point, we will take uh, questions. Let me take another question. This, of course, relates to the grant, and this is uh, this coming in uh, from uh, John, and uh, he's saying, is the grant only available for universities and colleges, or is it available for K-12 institutions as well? The answer to that is, John, it's available to K-12 as well. Uh, the grant is available in both higher education and K-12 space, and uh, you know, in order to apply for the grant, you can uh, you can uh, go to our website www.campusconsortium.org, uh, www or simply submit your grant application at grant application at campusconsortium.org. That answers your question. Mike is replying, saying that answers. Saying thank you. Okay, great. Um, another question around. Okay. Our university is in the process to change the ERP and LMS providers with mobile campus app help me integrate with any vendor or does it offer the link with banner only the and while I'm while I'm uh, answering that question I just want to confirm if Amanda are you back on I am I'm sorry about that <laughs> <laughs> no problem good to have you back yeah we lost you for a second so we were just uh, addressing some of the questions that are coming in uh, I was replying uh, to the one uh, that uh, you know that is that is coming in right now. So the answer to that question is, uh, we you know we support all uh, ERPs and LMS. It doesn't have to be just Banner. So you know, Chansabar, Colleague, PeopleSoft, or what have you. Uh, there's a question for you, Amanda. Um, the question was, does the integration uh, or was the integration uh, you know accomplished directly from the ERP database? Or do you have to export from the ERP to a static file, and then into the mobile app? Okay, so we established a VPN connection, and it was actually a very easy process. Does that answer the question? Yes, it does. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, this, there's another question coming from Julianne, and she's asking, after, launch, after launching the mobile app, was there any... Let me read this out. Was there a noticeable decrease in portal use? You know, I'm not sure that was checked. That's a that's, a, that's something maybe we should have considered. Um, right. But not that not that I know of. I guess it wasn't noticeable enough because we didn't even think of checking it. Okay, great, uh, Juliana. I hope that answers the question. Okay, uh, anybody else has any questions to ask? We also have lines open in case somebody wants to. Jump in and ask questions. Amanda is here. Let's give everybody a minute or so. I don't think anybody else has any more questions. Uh, so, uh, of course, uh, 
before we call this a wrap, I would like to go over a couple of slides about campus consortium before we sign off for the day. So, uh, oh, one second, there's a question coming in. Uh, oh, sure. A uh, question is coming in from Rod. Uh, Rod uh, is asking, can you provide uh, contact information for Amanda? The answer, Rod, is yes. We will be sharing. Uh, you know, Amanda's contact information. Uh, we, we will be sharing the presentation. And Amanda, if you if you're okay with it, we would we will share your email ID with everyone who's present today. And uh, that's fine. And uh, thank you. And yes, we will be uh, happy to share Amanda's email uh, ID. And uh, going back to the slides. So we have two grants running in the current campaign. We have. So we have three grants running in the current campaign. We have attendance tracking grant, campus safety, and campus portal grant. For those folks who joined us today and are interested in any of these grants, uh, can visit our website at campus uh, www.campusconsortium.org or simply submit your grant application at grant application at campusconsortium.org. We will be sending you the copy of the of the presentation today, so you can route yourself to the right destination. Uh, the grant also, the grant covers a total of 252465 uh, We're running an early bird grant today uh, and this covers you for licensing and implementation. The grant includes the you know, following features, uh, you know, uh, how to, uh, so basically what you need to do is you can uh, go to uh, the mobile campus, uh, uh, you know, grant and uh, download that from our website and apply for the grant. I right. Uh, the deadline to that is March 30th, and uh, we, of course, so you know, apart from apart from that, the the you know, we are running uh, other grant programs as well. So uh, let's say today you're interested in the mobile campus grant because you like what you saw, you know, uh, with what Amanda presented and you know what Delaware Technical Community college is done. Uh, we do have a few seats left. You can uh, contact the consortium and we will send you the grant application. And if you're one of the lucky, uh, you know, lucky few to get shortlisted, we will, you know, go ahead and set up a meeting and proceed with next steps and qualification process. Some of the grants that we're offering are, of course, artificial intelligence grant, after hours health desk grant, single sign-on and identity grant, uh, Office 365 migration, studio for students grant, the one that Amanda showed uh, a while ago, cloud hosting, uh, single sign-on grant, and password manager, and multi-factor uh, authorization grant. What we need in order to give these grants to institutions is just to know that the, that you demonstrate commitment that really requires this, that that you, your campus or, or your you know team really requires a solution, and we are willing to you know help you out. Um, we uh, have come uh, to the end of today's session. I would like to thank uh, you, Amanda, for being such a wonderful host today and for presenting for, for us today. It's an honor for, for us to have you here, so thank you. I would like to also thank our audience for joining us today. Uh, again, once, once again, if you, you know, want to apply, you can visit our website. Uh, you can see it's up on the screen. Once again, thank you, everybody. This is Vincent on behalf of Campus Consortium signing.